Howdy folks, Dave here at Thunder Mesa Studio where it's still full steam ahead on the OM30 Gruesome Gulch project. You know, I've only got a couple of weeks left before the layout makes its debut out in Riverside, California, and there are still quite a few projects to wrap up. But what I want to work on today is the final structure for the town's main street, a dilapidated old general store called Lou Cipher's Mercantile. Buy, sell, or trade, all souls welcome. Now, just like with the Eternal Rest Hotel that I built a couple weeks ago, I was not that thrilled with the original mock-up that I had created for this little store. So I went back to the drawing board and completely redesigned it to better fit that space. And I've come up with a nice collection of laser cut parts to get started with. So without any further ado, let's jump right into building. Most of the parts I've got here today are made out of some uh, 1 16th of an inch thick basswood plywood, which is one of my favorite materials to work with. Looking at the floor of the structure, you can get an idea of its footprint. It's actually going to have an angled doorway. Someone suggested this uh, in the YouTube comments, and I really like the idea, so I decided to go with it. I'm going to start with the rear wall of the structure, which as you can see is just completely blank, and that's because it's right up against the cliff, so no details would be visible. Next I want to add one of these 1 8 square braces right up at the top of the wall. Now I'll use this 1 16th inch thick MDF floor, keep everything square and in the right shape. Add another brace right down here along the floor, one at this corner, and over in this corner too. On these visible walls I want to add a little bit of distressed grain with the blade of my razor saw. And maybe a few random knot holes here and there. I want to add some vertical cut lines. Just about every other board. And last but not least, I'll add some nail holes. This entry wall goes on at a 45 degree angle. So now I just need to bevel all of these walls with my sanding block. And this is just a trial and error until I get it right, until they all fit together nicely at the corners like that. This structure is designed with a recessed entryway, so I want to get that built while the glue is drying on all of that. That just fits together like that. And then the actual door frame goes on top of that. Now I should be able to slide the final piece right in like that. Okay, got that all together. And you can see how it's all been thoroughly braced on the inside. Now I can get some paint on it. I'm going to be using the same technique to finish the walls on this that I used on the hotel. Except this time I'm using a different color. This is some Rust-Oleum camo light tan. While the paint dries on that I can start prepping the door and window pieces and all the trim for painting. Let's put the door together first. This layer just slips over this one to create a three-dimensional looking door. And this cornice now gets built up from three pieces at the back and then this kind of decorative piece. And then it gets a fine bit of molding along the top edge. I also want to build up these uh, window casements and trim pieces. It's all one unit. It's going to go right on the wall. Just want to show you real quick how I like to lay these parts out for painting. You know, I got a piece of cardboard with some uh, painter's tape sticky side up, which is an old trick. Uh, but I also like to label uh, where all the parts are going to go on the model. just makes it a lot easier when it comes time to assemble. Don't have to think about it, just grab and go. And the color I'm going to paint all these is some uh, Rust-Oleum Flat Red Primer, basically a red oxide. Well now the paint is uh, dry to the touch on this, but still a little bit gummy, if you know what I mean. And that's what you want for this next step, because I'm just taking a wire brush 
going over it and taking some of that paint off, going with the grain, and then just using the edge of my hobby knife, go back and kind of start randomly scraping paint off here and there. And now with that done, I want to go over all of these walls again with my wood stain, which is uh, just rubbing alcohol with a few drops of India ink in it. And so all of that bare wood that I just exposed will now look old and weathered. I also want to dry brush some weathering onto all of these pieces using some granite gray and some territorial beige. I'll mix those together about 50-50. Scrub 99.9% .9 of the paint off of the brush. Hit the high spots. So there you can see the before and after the weathering pass with the dry brushing. See what a difference that makes. And I started uh, gluing the trim in place. I don't want to do the doors and windows just yet because uh, I need to break all the glass. And you know, in all of the structures in Gruesome Gulch, you know, the glass is broken and the buildings look dilapidated and abandoned. But I don't know if I've mentioned this yet. This one is not just going to look old and abandoned. It's also going to look like it was burned. Like it was on fire quite recently. In fact, the fire is still going to be smoldering inside. But I can add this bit of entryway trim right now. So here's the look I'm after with the windows. Not only broken out, but burned out. And once again, I'm just using some thin acetate, probably from an old electronics package, and uh, cutting it with my hobby knife to, to make the breaks. And then I uh, use a lot of colored chalks, black and gray, and some matte finish on there to hold it in place. Now I can go ahead and glue this one in place. Just take some ground black chalk, bring that smoke stain right up the side of the building. Now I can put this window on and all the related trim pieces. And once again, bring the smoke and soot stains right up the side of the building. Now I'm just finishing up the transom and the door, giving them the same treatment with the broken glass, broken mullions in the windows. Uh, now I just want to add a doorknob to this. I've got a tiny little Pico track nail. It should work nicely. I've already got a hole drilled through here. Put some CA on the back. Now I can paint that brass, the Vallejo brass to match the uh, lock plate. And we'll trim it off on the back. Now I'll spray the back of these with my uh, clear matte finish. Give it a little tooth so the uh, the chalks will stick to it. Now I'll blacken these up too, just the way I did the other windows. And I'll just put some glue around this frame. And I can glue this transom in from behind. Now, glue the door in just slightly ajar. And I'll bring all that soot and smoke right up the front. I just finished painting the interior flat black, so it'll just kind of disappear behind the, the few details that I want to add on the inside. But before I move on to anything in the interior or the roof or anything like that, I have some signs I want to add to the building. I spent the morning making these up in Adobe Photoshop and uh, now I'm excited to put them on. Now the first thing is to take it over there and spray the back with some uh, uh, good old 3M Super 77 multi-purpose adhesive. Now I've got a, just a scrap of uh, some Bristol board here. 
and then I can cut each one of these out. I want this one to be a two-sided sign, so I'm going to glue these two up back to back. Now I want to paint all of the edges that same red oxide to match the trim of the building. Now I've pre-painted some 2x4 with that same trim color, and I can use it to frame this sign out. Glue along the top edge. Press it down like so. Try to get it centered in there. I can trim that off right there and flip it over. Do the same thing on the other end. Now I can do the long sides in just the same way. And I can just touch up the cut ends with a little bit more of the trim color. Should be about ready to install. Except, I want to make it look like it was uh, scorched and burned down on the bottom to uh, match the rest of the building. So I'm actually going to just take my hobby knife and cut this corner right off. Rough that up a little bit. Cut some pieces out. Maybe shave this off a little bit. I'm going to take some pure black. Go back over these areas that I just cut, just on the edge right here. Then with the same black, do a little dry brushing up in the direction that the flames would have gone. And this goes above the front entryway, right in the middle. Now to finish this off, I've got a couple of pieces of uh, blackened music wire. I've drilled some small holes up here. So now, fill up just a dab of CA on each end. And then lastly, more black chalk. Blend all that together. Well, before I burned it up, the sign said uh, dry goods, hardware, and groceries. For this sign on the side of the building, I, uh, I want to have the look that it's kind of fallen down like that. And one way to sell that illusion is to uh, create kind of a ghost outline of where the sign used to be. So I cut out a little piece of paper in the same shape as the sign, put a little double stick tape on the back, and uh, patted it to get most of the stick em off so it's not very tacky, just tacky enough to stick on here. I mixed up a little chalk that's similar to the color of the wall. I'm just going to go around the outside of this. Let me throw a little. Uh, gray in there too. Now, lift off our mask and see how we did. Nice. I'll get some clear acrylic spray on that. Here, a little white glue on the back. And right about like so. Then, more black. More soot to blend it all together. The last sign is sort of this uh, advertising broadside. And it says, uh, Lou Cipher's Mercantile. All souls welcome. Buy, sell, or trade. More than 666 unique items. Dry goods and groceries. Hardware, tinware, and stoves. Guns and ammunition. Black powder, knives, uh, potions, poisons, and patent medicines. I just think it's funny to have a sign advertising, you know, so much merchandise and so many different things on a building that's so small. That's just my sense of humor. <laughs> I want to have some more fire damage up here uh, along the roof line. There's actually going to be a hole in the roof. 
uh, where the fire came through. I'm just basically whittling this away up here so I can then paint it to make it look like the fire came through here. You know, fire damage is different than, say, rot, where the boards just break. This is more, um, it kind of scoops it out, you know, and burns away pieces like this. And I wanted to get that carving done before I put these final pieces of trim up here on the cornice. This is some uh, 1 by 8 and uh, I broke this piece to stand straight up like that. And one way to, to keep that so it won't fall off is to, you know, soak it with a little bit of CA on the back and then uh, hit it with some accelerant. First some black on all of this exposed wood that I carved out. That's the first step. I want to go back and dry brush on more black all around this. Yes, you could do all this with an airbrush too, but um, I like the control I get with a brush in my hand. It's just my personal preference. And then more chalk. I think that's got it. I built up a foundation for the structure out of eight by eights the same way I did on several of the other buildings for Gruesome Gulch. And now I'm putting in the board sidewalk, which is always fun because I get to split and break the boards and generally look, make it look old and rotten. These are just some um, O-scale 1x12s that I'm using here. Well, now we come to the really fun part of this build, the part I've been looking forward to all along. Uh, not that it hasn't been fun up until now, but what we have here is basically an old burned out looking building. And what I want is one that looks like it's still smoldering, still on fire, or could flare up again at any moment. And uh, that's going to call for a little bit of imagineering, a little bit of illusioneering, uh, some lighting effects, and some other special effects. So let's jump right into that. Now, first of all, I have a pair of uh, orange amber flickering LEDs. These are five millimeter LEDs. These are the same ones that I use to create the look of fire down at the bottom of the uh, El Dorado mine. And the first step to making this work is I need to solder on some 510 ohm resistors onto the positive lead so that they will work with the layout's nine volt lighting system. Now, Resistors attached. I just need to add the wiring. One thing to remember when soldering anything to LEDs is that um, they are heat sensitive, so you really don't want to, you know, spend a lot of time on there with a soldering gun. You want to get in and get out as fast as you can. And now I want to wire these two LEDs together. By the way, this is uh, some 28 AWG wire that I'm using, 28 gauge. Shrinky dinks. Use just a little black electrical tape. To hold these together. So now we test. Now I want to mount these inside the structure. I actually want to mount them right here on the interior of this wall so they won't be visible through the doors or windows. And I'm going to use some uh, Scotch Extreme Professional Grade, whatever you want to call it, multi-surface, multi-purpose mounting tape. I love this stuff, as long as you don't have to ever take it off. <laughs> because, like it says, it's permanent. Um, if you may, you may have used the, uh, the Scotch foam tape with the green backing. This is similar stuff to that, but it's a lot stronger, as it says on the label, 300 pounds strength. So it takes 300 pounds of force to unstick this. So I'm just going to put this square inside. The hardest part is usually getting this red backing off. <laughs> there we got it. Great thing about LEDs too is they're bendable. You can bend the wires like that. So just don't do it back and forth too much or they will break. Because um, I want these to kind of 
point towards the back wall. So, run the wires down through there. And press the LEDs into place on the tape. And I like to put a piece of black gaffer's tape over the top of that also to further secure them in place and you know to keep dust and stuff from gathering on that tape. Kind of tight in here. It's a small building and I've got big hands. Let's see what that looks like on the inside. Just like so. The second part of this little magic trick is this little device right here. This, I, some of you may recognize this, this is an old school smoke unit. You know, this go back to the days of, you know, old Lionel. And um, this one is designed to look like a chimney a little bit. I think it's supposed to go in a structure as a chimney. Um, it's made by uh, Swith of Germany. I don't know if I'm pronouncing that right. Probably not. And it is so old <laughs> that the label basically is crumbled into dust. And the instructions are in German, so that's not very helpful for me anyway, since I don't read German. This was given to me by a friend, but you can still find smoke units like this out there in the wild. Um, and, you know, it uses this uh, old oily smoke fluid, which you can still pick up. Just put a few drops in here, and it uh, slowly emerges from the chimney, or this device. This thing is rated uh, 12 to 16 volts AC or DC, it says. So you can hook it up to the accessories terminal on an old DC power pack. You can hook it up uh, to the rail power and have it controlled by the rheostat. Um, I actually tested it with 9 volts. It works with 9 volts as well. And where I want this to be is right here behind this burned out place on the roof. There we go. Now that is hidden right there. You need to have the top accessible for one thing. That's where the smoke comes out and also so you can refill it with the smoke fluid. Just testing it out now with a 9 volt battery. You can see the wisps of smoke coming up. Might need a little more power than this, I think. This uh, next bit of trickery will likely be familiar to anyone who's ridden um, Pirates of the Caribbean at uh, Disneyland or Magic Kingdom in Florida. Just taking a, a wooden beam, carved some parts away, and now I'm blackening it. Just dry brushing some acrylics on. And now I've got some crumpled up aluminum foil. Yep, we're going really low tech here. And I want to take and glue this into these places where I've cut the boards away the wood away. So we can smoosh that back in there. Just a little more black paint to blend that in together. So now when this is seen through the windows with that uh, flickering amber light on it, it look like glowing embers. Exact same trick they use in the burning town scene on Pirates of the Caribbean, except this is at uh, 148 scale. Glue this in here with one end sticking out the window so it looks like the beam fell and broke the glass. And I think I'll add a second beam laying across like this. Yeah, I love it when a plan comes together. For the roof, I've cut a piece of black mat board to fit and also uh, cut it out so the uh, the roof joist will show through. I'll put some rafters under there too. Now I need to paint this uh, flat black. I also want the roof to be removable, so I'm building an internal frame that will make it rigid. Just gluing on some 6x8s around the outside that will fit down inside of the uh, bracing in, on the interior of the structure. And then I've got a piece of 4x6 rafter will be visible through this hole in the roof. And I've carved it out to make it look like it's uh, burned almost all the way through. I also have a stove pipe that I want to add. This is a white metal casting from Wiseman Model Services. And I need to drill a hole right into the side of the building right here. There we go. Oh 
always like to drill a hole like that, a little bit smaller, and I'm actually going to need it. And I can use a rat tail file to get it to just the right size. So I get a nice tight fit. Now I need to paint that. This one's going to have a tar paper roof. So I've cut some uh, three foot wide, three scale foot wide strips of black construction paper. I'm just going to apply those to the roof with some diluted white glue. Also got to remember to take your strips of construction paper and crumple them up every once in a while and add some rips and tears. Always got to have a few patches too. Since heat rises, <laughs> I like to think that these uh, pieces of roofing paper would be kind of blown up a little bit. And since the fire burned this hole in the roof, this gets all the same black paint treatment. Now I can finish off the rest of this with some black and gray chalks. Black for soot and gray for ash. And I've got a piece of black cinefoil to use as flashing for the stovepipe. Got some tacky glue on the back of that. Let's see here. If I press that in, I can find where my hole is. There we go. Should be able to push this right in now. A little soot coming down from there. <laughs> Probably a little bit of rust. Now I think all the final detailing can be done over in the scene. I just have to carefully thread all these wires through. There you go. The first thing is I want to add some steps coming down from the hotel. Wooden barrels are always a nice touch. This one looks like it may have been singed a little bit by the fire. Hope that's not black powder in there. Yeah, maybe a little bit more burn debris. And yeah, maybe a bit of advertising that got blown down and slightly singed. Now I want to add some stairs down to the street. And, you know, both of these uh, sets of stairs are just some laser cut parts that I created. Watch that last step there. It's a doozy. Now I got to have a few tumbleweeds, right? I make these with some. Uh, medium green Woodland Scenics foliage netting and then I uh, spray them, spray paint them with some uh, Rust-Oleum Camo Light Tan. Can't have too many tumbleweeds in a ghost town. And last but not least, we have a rattlesnake. This guy's from Mini Prints and I painted him to look like a Western Diamondback and I think he's going to be sleeping right up on the front porch. Who knows? He might be the proprietor. Pull the roof off. Fill up the smoke fluid. We can test this out and see how everything works together. And there it is, the final structure for Gruesome Ghosts. Thank you for watching that entire video and hanging out with me today. I hope you enjoyed it. hope you got a lot of good stuff out of it. It might be the final structure, but it is not the final project. I still have a few more things to do in the next couple of weeks, so I hope you'll tune in for those videos coming real soon. Until then, you can uh, follow Thunder Mesa on Instagram at Thunder. Dot Mesa, and you can find out all that's new on the Thunder Mesa Studio website at thundermesa.studio. And if you really like what we're doing here at the channel and want to show your support, you can head on over to patreon.com slash thundermesa like these nice folks did and show your support there. Until next time, keep moving forward my friends and adios for now.